Sure. So my name is Francesca Rossi. I work uh, at IBM Research. Um, I joined IBM three years ago and before I was in academia and I remember the times of the expert systems as well because my first uh, uh, AI conference was uh, more than 30 years ago. So I've seen a lot of ups and downs in this technology, you know, the so-called AI summers and winters. And uh, so uh, at IBM, I'm, uh, the, my title is the AI ethics global leader, which means that I do research on AI ethics issues, uh, as well as uh, trying to coordinate the internal uh, activities around AI ethics in the company. But also I work a lot externally in the partnership and collaborations that we have around AI ethics with many different uh, partners and stakeholders. So we often think about the fourth industrial revolution creating jobs that we can't even imagine yet, jobs that don't currently exist. So it's a lot of fun to be sitting here with someone who is an AI ethicist um, and the AI, global, the AI ethics global lead at IBM, which is a role that, as we were discussing before the event, didn't even exist a few years ago. Well, yes. I mean, uh, as I said, when I joined IBM uh, three years ago, we immediately started thinking about these uh, issues in this very powerful technology, uh, issues that have to do mostly with trying to uh, deliver a technology that can be trusted, that is trustworthy. So that's uh, the main topic of my um, uh, my uh, paper in this uh, I issue of the journal. Um, and the idea is that uh, uh, trust uh, is uh, really uh, going to enable uh, the adoption, the full adoption of the technology. And without full adoption, we cannot get all the positive benefits that are uh, in, in uh, because of this technology. And of course, the trust has many dimensions. So we started immediately to think, I think in 2016, we published our first uh, uh, white paper of learning to trust the AI system and what it meant. We started framing uh, this idea of trust in the various dimensions, so which has to do with trusting the technology, so properties that the technology should have, like uh, you know, being fair, being explainable, being aligned to our values, and so on, but also trust in those that deliver the technology how they're going to deal with our data, you know, what are they going to do with the data uh, that is needed for uh, certain kinds of AI systems, especially the most successful uh, ones, such as those based on machine learning. Um, and uh, what are the design choices that they make? They should be, you know, transparent about uh, how they inject uh, um, uh, explainability, capabilities in technology, uh, how they're testing, how they're training uh, their uh, models uh, in AI. So transparency that help, you know, building trust also, not just in the technology, but also in those that deliver the technology. So we started thinking about that, and in all this thinking, while doing research, while to working within the company, we s immediately understood that uh, AI researchers, AI people cannot solve this issue by themselves. So we needed to work in a very multidisciplinary, multi-stakeholder environment and also multicultural. So we started putting together and uh, uh, applying our leadership in uh, enabling the construction also of uh, um, initiative of this kind. So for example, um, in 2016, we put together this initiative called the Partnership on AI that started from six companies who that are competing on the marketplace, but they decided that uh, a collaborative environment was the only one that was uh, you know, uh, useful for really building a technology that is responsible, sustainable, and trustworthy. And then from the six company, actually we said, yeah, but not just companies. Here we need uh, the voices of everybody else. So now we have more than 80 partners, uh, ranging from companies, but also uh, other stakeholders like universities, uh, uh, research centers, uh, NGOs, uh, uh, UN agencies, uh, and many others. Um, because really we think that this is the only environment that can be useful. Even issues like, such as uh, bias, which is an issue that many people talk about, about you know, the, one of the um, properties of the technology, we want it to be fair in uh, making decisions or in recommending humans which decisions should be made. That issue is not something that came from within the scientific AI community, it came from outside. 
And then the scientific AI community tried to find technical solution for that. So at IBM, we have all, a, a lot, of, a very fortunate environment because we have a lot of different division in the company. We have research, we have products, we have platform, we have people working with governments uh, and so on. So that allows us to really see many different uh, uh, viewpoints around these issues, find the solution, raise the issue, discuss them and so on. But also we work again with the governments, uh, with the other companies and with many other stakeholders. Um, so this is clearly, a, while still an emerging and very nascent field of AI ethics, it's grappling with some really serious issues that you know, get at the heart of every society, um, bias, trust. Um, so can you tell us a little bit more about the sort of principles around AI ethics? Um, are, is there a sort of shared set of principles that's starting to emerge and what would it take to get there? Yeah, well, um, many initiatives uh, came about to think about these principles. So what should be the principles to develop and deliver this AI technology? And right now, there are really many, many different uh, lists of principles. They are not, they're very overlapping with each other, of course. So some, some of them are uh, at different levels, so, but of course they have many things in common. So the main thing, of course, uh, is a bias should be taken care of or should be at least being made transparent so that everybody can be aware of the kind of bias that is uh, uh, possibly in the technology. Um, another issue is this uh, issue of value alignment. You know, if, the techno if AI is going to be uh, supporting decision made by another professional, which is the main kind of AI that IBM is delivering, you know, AI that is used in other enterprises to help their professional, like doctors or uh, bank uh, people, to make their decision, then of course uh, uh, we have to make sure that whatever values and guidelines and principles, ethical guidelines these professionals have to follow, the technology also knows, is aware about them, and can follow them as well in making this recommendation. And then the other overarching issue is explainability. So some of the most successful techniques in AI are uh, not very explainable. It means that they make decisions, maybe they're very accurate in making decisions, so, but they're kind of a black box. It's not really easy to understand why they made that decision, why they are recommending uh, somebody to make a decision. So that's also something very important because nobody would trust in the long term something that is a sort of a black box. Uh, and also, in many domains, uh, this is even required by law, like the GDPR or in many other domains. So it's, it is uh, important to be uh, making, you know, uh, building uh, explanation for whatever decisions are made, because otherwise, uh, because of law requirements, or even because these professionals, uh, maybe they receive recommendations that are counterintuitive for them, which sometimes can be very good, because it's something that they didn't think about, uh, and then the machine maybe being able to digest many more data can think about, but they need to understand why that, that uh, recommendation is made. So explainability is very important. So there are really a lot of uh, pre uh, sets of principles that uh, talk about these issues and many others, as I said, the, the, the way data is handled. Um, but, uh, um, and for example, I mentioned in my paper some of them, they are the Asilomar principles, so 23 principles of how, how AI should be developed. Uh, they are the principles of trust and transparency that IBM put together. There are other principles from other companies. Um, even in, the, in this recent uh, work that I'm doing uh, uh, for the European Commission, the European Commission put together uh, the uh, so-called high-level expert group on AI that is is uh, going to advise uh, the um, European Commission on uh, uh, how to build and deliver trustworthy AI in Europe. And we put together a, sort, uh, a list of principles uh, that are uh, somehow related to the principles that have to do also bi with bioethics, but they add this explainability condition that is not present in other, in other list of principles for other disciplines. Um, and but what is important that we go from the principles to concrete implementations. So, in fact, what we did, for example, for the European Commission, we started from the European Charter of Fundamental Rights. From there, we passed to principles and values. And then from this principle of value, we said, okay, so what are the requirements for trustworthy AI? And we listed 10 requirements 
For each one of them, we listed uh, technical and non-technical ways to achieve them, and then also ways to assess them. How do you assess that a certain piece of code, the piece of technology has uh, follows these requirements? So for example, at IBM, uh, we tried we have put you know, in place uh, um, uh, solutions to each one of these uh, uh, issues. So for example, for bias, besides doing research, publishing papers, of course, but we try to inject this bias uh, uh, detection and mitigation algorithm into our platform, into our products. For explainability, we work on causality that is very important in order to achieve explainability. Uh, for fairness, also we put together a, what we call an AI fairness toolkit uh, that has, uh, is an open source platform for all developers to understand what it means, uh, this notion of fairness. Uh, there is not one notion of fairness, but there are, in, in a recent tutorial in an AI conference, uh, was called the 21 notion of fairness. To make you understand that really this is a very complex uh, uh, topic, so developers need to be helped. And also, uh, we, we think that these AI ethics issues are not something that can be raised at the moment that the product is ready to be deployed, but it's something that people need to think about since the, the first day the design uh, ideas of the product is into place. And so we, uh, we built uh, and we wrote a very um, um, useful guide, we call it the everyday guide for AI ethics for developers so that the, in their everyday job they should think about these issues, think whether maybe not in, intentionally they are injecting bias or other issues in the AI products. So again, a company like IBM can uh, uh, work and deliver a lot of these supporting capabilities mm -hmm. for building trusted AI mm -hmm. uh, that can be also helpful for all the other companies mm -hmm. and maybe startups that have less resources and they need help. 